Hello everyone, this is Tactical H here, and welcome to another Total War Warhammer 2 online multiplayer battle. Today we have a battle sent in by viewer Koops from Clan BBB. He has appeared on this channel before as the opponent of Cool Umbrella, and today he will be leading the Vampire Counts against our Swan 181's Lizard Boys. Now, let us slow down for the army build, as the Vampire Count, it is a very tough matchup against Lizardmen, as they do not have the best anti-armor, anti-large units. Yes, they do have Blood Knights, but they are not primarily armor-piercing. They have the anti-large, but a lot of that will be mitigated by the heavy armor of the Lizardmen Dinos. And when you think about the air forces of the Vampire Count, honestly, it is not exactly what you want to bring, as it is way too risky. If the Lizardman brought Mazda Mundi or a High Slan, dropping a single Tempest into a bunch of your expensive flyers and half your air force would be dead. As for the monsters in your ground forces, the Crypt Horrors and the Vargulfs, they are just straight up worse monsters than the Lizardman Dinos. With poor leadership, poor melee stats, they can't really hold in combat against the Dreadsaurian or the Carnosaurs. So for Vampire Counts, monster mashing is no longer an option. But fret not, there are still solutions to the whole Lizardman Dino problem, and they come in the form of these two ghostly ladies, the Banshees. Now, they do not have the best weapon strength, only having 280, but most of them is armor piercing. They should be able to do some nice damage against the monsters while their own physical resistance and ability to heal their damage as the vampire counts means that they can actually tank out pretty well against the high weapon strength of the Lizardman Dinos. Now for the rest of the army build, we have a very wide infantry line with skeleton spears mixed in with normal skeleton warriors, the Tithe, the Regiment of Renowned Zombie Unit with extra unit models and extra hit points. And at the back we have more skeleton warriors, they are led by Heinrich Kimmler with his Tomb Blade and his Krell Summon. We also have a single Crypt Goal in the flank, probably there to clean up some skinks. And for the mobility, we have a lot of Hounds, two Dire Wolves, one of them the Dire Pack Regiment of renowned anti-large Dire Wolves. And then we have the Blood Knight. One more Blood Knight over here on this flank and that's it for the army builds, as they are rolling forward slowly but steadily marching towards the Lizardman frontline. Now for the Lizardmen, we have a bunch of skin cohorts backed up by some scary monsters. Stagadon, Dreadsaurian, Nakai, and also Bastilodon with the Rev Crystal. At the back, we have some more skin cohorts, some skin cohorts with Javis, and a single Croxagore, as well as the Star Chamber Guardians. Now they do have magic damage on these regiment of renowned elite temple gods, so the Banshees do have to be careful, but let's see what the Banshees are capable of in the face of these big scary monsters, especially the Dreadsaurian, who will pretty much roll over everything in the rest of the vampire army. Now there's no artillery in this battle, so both armies are just approaching each other, these Banshees getting a little too close to the Dressorians, eating a bunch of machine gun fire from the blow dots of the Dressorians' back. And now Nakai, as happy as ever, skipping into battle with his club swinging, charging straight for the Banshees. Unfortunately, the Banshees are not taking that much damage thanks to the physical resistance, while Nakai eating the charge from two Banshees, you can see that his HP is already having a minor dent thanks to the charge bonus and armor piercing. Now the terrifying Dreadsaurian also crashing into combat using the massive body weight to crush numerous undead. In response to the monster rushing, the Vampire Count summoned Krell, swinging his big ol' axe at the thick height of the heavily armored dinosaurs. At the back lines, we have some dire wolves swarming the skinks, but unfortunately, they don't really have the ability to beat skinks in melee combat, so they will have to be retreating. Instead, the creep ghouls, who are much better fighters to deal with enemy chaff, will be taking over and beating back the skink cohorts. And in front line, the first skeleton spearmen already crumbling to dust as the overloading of the crossguards, the skinks, and the dressorian has proven to be way too much. And now the blood knights will be charging into combat, trying to stem the tide by pinning down the dressorian. While over here, Star Chamber Guardians stuck on some skeleton spears will be eating a nice wounds of death. However, it is not doing a lot of damage as the placement was a little bit messy. Well, at the back, the Tithe and the Skeleton Spears are just pushing for the Skink backline. And in the front line, let us have a look at the monster mashing. The combination of Kamler, Krell, and the two Banshees seems to be doing quite a number on the Lizardman monsters. Nakai is down to half health and even terrified away. As Nakai only having fear as his attribute and no terror will be subjected to terror from the Banshees themselves. 
but Nakai being Nakai will quickly regain his composure, charge back into combat once more to join his Croxagore brethren. With Nakai rejoining the fight, the Lizardman Blob is rampaging. As they are hit by the primal roar, the plus 40 melee attack and physical resistance, of course that's not going to be doing anything to the Banshees as the Banshee does do magic attacks due to their ethereal daggers and whatnot. Though the attack buff will still make them take more damage. However, at the back line we have a whole bunch of skinks being pushed away by a concentration of dire wolves, zombies and a lot of blood knights overloading, especially this one staggered on here who is somehow separated from the main fight. It is in a dire situation, no pun intended, as the blood knights are surrounding it with the anti-large attacks. While it is trying to push its way through the blood knights, it is eating a lot of unnecessary attacks while it is not attacking unable to do any damage in return as the Blood Knights basically full health are just hunting down this Dagadon for free. How much damage did it do actually? Let's have a look. Only 480, definitely a waste of resources. But in the front line, the Dressorian is still rampaging, Krell is slowly approaching its summon limit and is going to disappear soon, while the rest of the zombies, their attacks are ineffective. Dressorian's the machine gun on his back is doing some nice chip damage onto Heinrich Kemmler forcing him away from combat as he has taken quite some damage from the combination of different armor piercing monsters already. Blood Knights also taking quite some damage will be charging in yet again trying to dish out as much charge damage as possible but charging through its own troops. The zombies is actually dampening that charge impact helping the lizard men instead. At the back we have the Star Chamber Guardians pushing forward as they have cleaned up most of the skeleton spears now trying to surround the banshees and support their lord. Nakai, who has been surrounded and constantly taking damage but still sustaining his hit points around half health. The Lizardman player has been spamming the Rav Crystal ability to keep these units HP topped up. Meanwhile, Kemmler, after taking so much damage, is sitting back, avoiding melee combat while using the Master of the Dead to passively heal back up. That means he's not activating the Chaos Tomb Blade by engaging in melee combat which is honestly a rather huge loss for the Vampire Count. The Chaos Tomb Blade can give plus 5 melee attack and plus 8 regeneration to all the units in the area. It is huge in this kind of blood fight. Maybe it can charge into the Bastilodon, that way they can still enjoy that Chaos Tomb Blade effect, having to activate it in melee combat while avoiding the most dangerous units in the Lizardman army. Without the passive healing, the Vampire Infantry stands no chance in this fight. Most of the infantry are now being grinded through by the combination of all these monsters and Star Chamber Guardians. Even the Banshees are taking some noticeable damage because their physical resistance means nothing in front of the magic attacks of these Star Chamber Guardians, who is also buffed up by the Primal Roar, gaining a massive boost in their melee attack, cleaving their way through the hordes of undead. Now the Blood Knights swarming this position, trying to use their massive charge bonus to put enough impact damage into the rears of the Temple Gods to break them off. But these elite Sauras hold firm and refuse to surrender. Instead, they counterpunch with their armor-piercing anti-large attacks, dragging down these elite Knights of the Undead. And with Kemmler getting into combat yet again, now Nakai and the Dressorian can finally hunt him down. And look at the Dressorian taking a massive bite out of Kemmler. Kemmler realizing he's in mortal danger, drops a zombie summon hoping to pin in the monsters but let's be completely honest here. An infantry the puny size of a zombie is not going to mean anything against the Dressorian, who casually pushes through. But luckily for Kemmler, he still have a few more seconds to survive as Nakai and the Bastilizon are tied down by the Blood Knights and zombies. The undead units, the Blood Knights, the Banshees are frantically chasing after the monsters trying to hunt them down, but sadly that's not going to be enough as Kemmler is on his last legs here. With only a sliver of health left, finally he is slain by the Dreadsaurian. The splash damage alone is enough to finish him off. Now the Blood Knights flooding in already onto one chevron will be doing some nice anti-large damage to both Nakai and the Dressorian but 100 armor on the Dressorian, 120 on Nakai the Wonder means that most of their charge damage will be mitigated by their heavy armor. It really comes down to whether the Banshees can tank out the damage with their physical resistance and drag down these scary monsters with their ghostly shanks. Of course, the Blood Knights will be continuously cycle charging into the fray, trying to get as much damage as possible, maximizing on their charge bonus. But it seems that the Miasma of Despair lowering their leadership, vigor and the speed, slowing them down allowing Nakai to catch up, who is happily skipping along knocking down the vampire riders from their steeds with his giant stone club. 
but that also means that Nakai is separated from the Dressorian. Fighting alone, being surrounded by Blood Knights, this is not a good engagement whatsoever. The Dressorian needs to push over and support his lord. As Nakai, who is now fighting alone, is taking massive damage from the armor piercing from the Banshees, the anti large from the Blood Knights, and he is terrified yet again. Pretty hilarious for a legendary Croxagore famous for fighting through hordes of chaos demons, only to be scared off by a tiny ghost. Not even the primal roar can save him, as the magic attacks, the ethereal shanks of the um, ghostly banshees will be ignoring that physical resistance. Of course, they are now turning back away again, trying to focus down the Dressorian, who is still a massive threat to the remaining vampire army, as the massive weapon strength 750, and that's the 150 damage on the banshee even after the physical resistance reduction. And banshees have a rather small health pool to begin with, combined with the fact that they lost their healing, the banshees are not holding up well in this combat. Now the blood knight's coming in with another rear charge trying to do as much damage as possible. Koops is definitely on point with the cycle charging in this game, and now Nakai is being pushed away by the Banshee, hunted down, slain in combat. And now this Banshee can finally come back to avenge for her fallen sister, who was slain by the Dreadsaurian. Now up to a Silver Chevron. This is insane. 245 kills. Let's have a look at the damage value. 4690 value. You can see how much damage can big monsters do to a Vampire Count army, and the Vampire Counts don't usually have the best solutions to deal with them. But this time, it seems the consistent backstabbing of the Banshees, the steady output of the armor-piercing damage is doing the trick, securing the victory for the Vampire Counts. Before you go into the army performances, just want to say a big thanks to Koops for sending in this replay and showing us how the Vampire Counts can take on the Lizardmen. It is a very tough matchup, but it seems that Banshees is one of the solutions that the Vampires can go for to fight off some Dinos. As you can see here, the Banshees doing some pretty decent damage, 1195 value, 1500 value, and considering that Koops sent in these Banshees absolutely bare bones, no abilities, no items. So they only cost around 750 gold and they absolutely earned back their value and more importantly Not only did they do a lot of damage They also took a lot of damage using their 80% physical resistance to tank out a lot of damage from the big scary monsters Nakai the Dreadsaurian they were there to survive and hold down distracting the monsters while the blood knights were able to perform the rear charges to dish out the damage for the rest of the army, we have the typical undead infantry not really doing much here. Crypt Goals didn't really do too much damage either. The Dire Pack and the Dire Wolves didn't really have too many targets to go around with, as the um, Lizardman player here did not bring any Chameleon Skinks, so the Hounds do not have any targets to run over. Heinrich Kemmler, not exactly a damage dealing character, instead using those heals and summoning Krell to do the damage for him and in the end just got hunted down by the Dreadsaurian. Now, thanks to the Banshee being the anchor, the single entity anchor, distracting the monsters, the Blood Knights were able to perform some devastating rear charges, running over the Skinks and charging into the big monsters. This one, not exactly earning back their value, but the other two, getting some really serious heavy lifting done. 1,691 value, 1,785 value, and two chevrons on these two units. Their charge damage is really effective against the Lizard and Dinos. Normally, they probably could have done more damage in the late game, as exhaustion actually lowers the effectiveness of armor, but unfortunately, on the Lizard and end, they have Nakai the Wanderer, a very non-meta pick, with the Golden Tribute. Providing surrounding units with perfect vigor, Nakai and the Dreadsaurian have been fighting in perfect condition other than some HP losses as they were able to have their vigor fresh and their armor is not affected by vigor whatsoever. So in the end, the Nakai the Wanderer did some nice damage, 2000 value and more importantly the Dreadsaurian, 4700 damage, almost killing half the army of the Vampire Counts. Of course, a lot of them are recovered damage from the invocations, the heals provided by the Vampire Counts, but still, Vampire Counts generally just have a hard time fighting monsters as they do not have any cost-effective armor-piercing anti-large attacks. So in the end, the Dressorian was just effortlessly smashing apart all the Vampire Resistance, even a lot of the Blood Knights. 
Now as for the rest of the build, the Skinks were ran over by the Blood Knights in the early game and of course the Star Chamber Guardians being the anti-large elite with armor piercing attacks as well, they were able to take down a lot of the Blood Knights and also grind through an endless horde of skeletons. The other monsters of the Lizardman didn't really do too well here, as the Croxagores are never a good monsters to begin with, the Stegodons got separated and surrounded by Blood Knights, it was no match for the might of the Blood Keep. Now the Bastilodon with Wrath Crystal wasn't really a damage dealer but more a healer, providing some nice heals to some of the key units like Nakai, the Dreadsorian and whatnot, so it got the value from there. And that's basically it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed today's content. Remember to hit the like button down below and subscribe to get notified every time I upload a new video. They will be covering battle replays like this one, tips and strategies for Total War Warhammer 2 online multiplayer, and wild army builds. And if you have any replays you want to showcase, feel free to drop by my Discord or send me an email with the replay file attached, I'll be sure to check it out. And also recently, I'm organizing another tournament on my Discord, pitching the old world factions against the new world factions. Feel free to have a look at the tournament as well, the link will be attached in the description, so just go ahead and check it out. If you're looking for a good fight, you're more than welcome to sign up and join our battles. And that is all for today. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Tactical Lich, signing out.